<laughs> Welcome back to the big board. All right, finally got a little bit of gaming done. We're looking at uh, Storming the Gap, World of War 85, Lock and Load Publishing, Scenario 11, something, something, something. It's called Engage More Closely or something like that. Interesting scenario. It's uh, one of the few that in the World of War universe that I'm aware of anyway, that has uh, no turn limit, number one. That's the first interesting thing. And uh, the victory conditions are literally for a media engagement where one side is trying to capture that hex and exit, and the other side is trying to capture that hex and exit. And so NATO starts over here and the Soviets start over there. <clears throat> they start up here and down here. And um, it's a big old kill or be killed. Whoever gets the most points wins. Anything else is a draw. So in, uh, in starting the game, you, you're going to run the chits, right? And as you probably all know, if you've well, run the cards, not the chits, but <coughs> I don't have any water, do I? All right. Uh, so you're, you're pulling cards. NATO typically gets two card activations per turn. So if it's going to get one, it's a reflection of the command and control capabilities and doctrine and all that sort of fun stuff. So two to one activations can often be a buzzkill for the Soviets. But if the cards come out right... It can also be very advantageous for the Soviets to kind of either move first or move last, as the case may be. So with this, given there's no rush to get to the objective and get things done, there was a tendency for me to play both sides a little more cautiously. And then at some point, caution was thrown to the wind. And all these markers you see here are wrecks and shit got real very quickly. So pretty interesting. The, it looked like, uh, you know, the Leo twos and the M ones were going to be outgunned by the T eighties. And I would say the T 80 and the Leo two are probably relatively equivalent. And then the T 62s and the T 55s, the T 62s are probably equivalent to the M ones. I'm trying, I'm looking for the M ones to see where they are. <clears throat> here they are here. You know, they've got a range of 11. They use four dice to hit with a five or a six. Uh, whereas the T62, if I could grab one without bumping the camera, I've got old camera stand here. Uh, so let's see, a T62 is, yeah, uh, 11 range, three dice on a five or better to hit. Uh, although it does have a different ammo type, but um, which makes me wonder if I played that all correctly. Yeah, the, uh, the orange number is just a uh, moving fire capable. Uh, that's right. <clears throat> so, where were we? The plan, my, my clever plan for the Soviets was to bring all the T-80s down here and send the T-55s, T-62s up here to guard the exit and then gradually take our time and come across and beat up on the Leos, probably beat up on anything if the M1s came down this way. And for the NATO side, it was to, hey, you know, set a perimeter here, shoot stuff in the open. The M1s come on up here. They could screen here in case the Soviets came this way, or they could sort of help the kill box down here. Um, now, what ended up happening was I thought it best to leave a company of T-80s until the T-55s got up this way. That took a lot longer because of activations. Uh, the two of these guys missed a turn uh, and then they got the, the follow one turn. So by turn four or five, I had half my guys down here and a company kind of isolated up there. And then we started having command issues. These guys, the, the Soviets finally said, you know what? Let's just combine all these forces and push, push forward. Yeah, big mistake. Uh, the, the Leos in particular just dominated the field and here's why a 14 range right 14 range four dice hitting on a three a four a five or a six 
If they get fired at with an ATGM, they get an extra die on their defense. Those guys are killer. Now, they're also, you know, they're just as good. You know, well, these T80s are almost as good. Range of 12, three dice on a four, five, or a six, they're going to hit, right? Pretty powerful. And, and they just white the table. Uh, particularly when we're, we're rolling to save, where I've got to roll three dice and I need six to save. Uh, it, it just got ugly. And, and, and so there's one thing tactically, I guess, in modern war, you know, wouldn't these guys, given that it was part of an encirclement and all the rest of it, have out, been allocated some artillery? Maybe they would have been allocated some smoke. Maybe there needs to be some sort of uh, capability to pop smoke or generate smoke for either a certain amount of turns or, you know, uh, under a diminishing methodology. But it was open, fast, and bloody, and after seven turns, let's call it six and a half turns, it was all over Red Rover with uh, really only three or four uh, T-80 tank platoons up there. And realistically, with... The Germans now up that end of the map. The M1s came down this uh, section of the map. And I think, uh, I think I picked where well, these guys were here somewhere. These guys were going to come up this way, cross over this bridge, time it with this, chip away at the bad guys, and then walk everybody off. And all they need to do is get one off, right? Uh, one unit off the board. Uh, and they're done. They, you know, they've got to capture that hex, but they can take care of the little commandos that are in there or Spetsnaz, whatever they are. So it was quite a bloody and eventful scenario. I would probably want to play it again and see what happens if we if we bum rush the M1s and try and knock them out over here, and then stage over here, come down this way, right come down this way to this town here while these guys potentially try and sneak up and keep the let the, the two leopard formations uh, act uh, busy. I'm not sure that five platoons or six platoons of 62s and 55s can do that based on what I just saw, but that would probably be my game plan. Uh, and I'd obviously we'd do some adjustments based uh, for the NATO side based on... Uh, based on that effort as well, but we'll see. Anyway, I just thought I'd uh, do a quick little wrap up and, and share with you uh, this um, very quick playing, very clean playing, modern platoon scale system, tactical system. One of my fav all time favorites, uh, being a, a World at War, you know, from back in the day with Lock and Load, World at War fan, Game Boy uh, fan for a long time. And uh, the new rendition, despite some folks having, you know, potential issues with it uh, because of their 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 um, adherence to the old system, I think uh, this is uh, a a far more attractive number one, and number two uh, more realistic and more uh, uh, more playable and consistently written set of rules than uh, the old system. All right, good stuff. Thought I'd just share that. Talk to you soon.